Yeah, well, I'm, I'm right. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what we're some things we're working on at, at Sunlight. But I thought it was. I thought um, it'd be really useful to point out just to give everyone a reference point of of um, uh, politician pages. So I'm not trying to steal. I mean, Josh's site is really quite incredible, and I'm not trying to demo that. So you can tape this, but there's a couple of things we're going to show you that we don't really want to necessarily put up on the web yet as we go further along. So, um, okay, just just no, yeah, just say no, cut, and I will stop. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of just want to make sure that everyone here did just refresh their memory of kind of what's out there right now in terms of pages that people are going to. Um, this is Josh's site, of course. Um, really good nice work. Here's Paul Peterson around from Minnesota over at Open Congress. Um, my own take is that Open Congress has done some interesting things of integrating some more of what's going on in the media and other stuff, and it's happening, so like uh, Colin Peterson in the blogs, et cetera. So very excited about all of that. I'm going to focus more on the financial. So uh, Center for Responsive Politics, Open Secrets, they're the big player at the federal level in terms of giving, rec of, giving um, of tracking federal campaign dollars. And I think that um, GovTrack and Open Congress sex here presentations, but a lot of the information is put up in this very kind of traditional tables and charts, tabular formats, that this is how we encounter the information. Is it meaningful? This is new. This is really exciting. This is new. They just launched these two graphs a couple days ago. But, um, that's, and. It's on Facebook also. Is that yours too? That's my best shot. Okay, excellent. So, the, um, and you can see here, if I'm a, if I'm a journalist, or I'm an individual or I'm an activist and I'm trying to learn something, what I'm doing is I'm going to um, Open Secrets, I'm searching on, on Peterson, and then I have to drill down to each of these different sections to find the information that I'm looking for. I have summary information, but I have to drive down. It's very Web 1.0 oriented in terms of pages that are published. Um, it's pretty clear, I picked Peterson in particular because it's pretty clear when you look at this, uh, this has just increased. Um, well, I guess I, I'm looking at his career profile. But anyway, you can see that agriculture is far ahead, is, is right out there. This is very clear in his current election. I guess I have his career profile up right now. But it's really out there. So one, and now of course, if I want to then go learn about, you can see the different sectors who've given money to him. But if I want to begin to research relationships, like I happen to know that there's an earmark that he sponsored for a company called Mattrax. And if I want to look at more about Mattrax, I have to go to another site, I have to go to Fed Spending, and I have to, and I have to do a search on Mattrax and try to see what data they have. And okay, I do find some data, and I find out that Mattrax, you know, they get, um, they, have, they have in the past been getting contracts. So I have to go to different sites. So now I'm going to, that's the background. So what we have always had a goal at Sunlight is to provide one-click disclosure. We want to create, we want to make more data available with APIs and RSS feeds. We want to then be able to merge that data together. So we're looking behind the scenes. We're using a JSON feed, but we're getting data from campaign, from CRP, getting some lobbying information, getting earmarks from the database we're building, getting data from Fed spending, all around Colin Peterson, the relationships that he has there. But of course, this is very geeky. We want to be able to make a page that, um, this is what we actually call Sunlight Media Services. And this is the lawmaker profile. And our idea is that if the um, media sites, except for the major players, most newspapers, um, don't have in-house technical staff. So even if we make APIs available, they're not going to necessarily have the resources to use them. So we thought one thing we could do is to fit into the model of, um, and this is the, you know, this is, 